Hi, this is Tyler Woods, and you're listening to KMKRLP 99.9 FM Tucson, and the show is Music Matters, and today I am sitting with what I call a local celebrity, Don Armstrong. Thank you, Tyler. Great to be here. Good to have you, Don. And um, what is it like? How long have you been in Tucson to become a local celebrity? Well, <laughs> I've... I first came to Tucson probably about 25 years ago. We started playing, uh, my late wife and I started playing uh, some cowboy uh, music festivals down here. And we were living in New Mexico. And it was the one place that we liked to come that we weren't so anxious to head back. And so we moved down here about probably 12, 13 years ago, something like that. And we played around quite a bit, but it wasn't until after her passing that I really, you know, just jumped with, in with both feet and uh, really kind of attacked <laughs> the music scene here. What year did your wife pass? Uh, 2014. Wow, and, and you've been this popular in, in that short of a, well, a time? I, I don't know if I'd call it that, but... Uh, Everybody knows. Pe- people have been really kind. They're Tucson really is great for, um, I love, and we're going to talk about that later, but let's talk more about, so your wife passed, <laughs> you got more into music. Did her passing inspire you to do more with music, or was it something to do? I well, mean, we had always happened? done music. We would always been uh, performing and recording and things like that, but... Yeah, I kind of had to do it to stay alive, pretty much. I wrote more than I ever had before, and 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 um, I learned a lot from her. She taught me a lot about singing, about voice. She had a beautiful voice. Uh, she taught me a lot about writing, and she had written, she had had songs recorded by John Denver and Judy Collins and Jerry Jeff Walker, and and uh, she even had a number one song in Ireland recorded by the Irish Rovers. So I learned. Quite a bit. Yeah, I've seen videos that you've put up, and she seemed very <coughs> talented and very skilled. So yeah. I appreciate you putting the videos up. Um, so then you got very active as Don Armstrong, or I yeah. see online you have a lot of incarnations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's because you know, as we were saying, it's it's there's such a, a welcoming musical family here in Tucson that it's really hard not to ex- experiment and play with other people in, in, in different incarnations, as you say. Sometimes I'll play with uh, Earl Edmondson. I have my own band, the Whiskey Pellions. We play around here quite a bit. And, and, uh, and it's fun to sit in with people like uh, the Two Sonics and Peter McLaughlin and his... Uh, and La- no, Nick McBlain Is and Peter Lockdrain. McLaughlin here in Tucson? Oh, yeah. I oh, say I wanted to think he doesn't live here anymore. So. Oh, no. It's oh, because okay. he's on the road so much. Ah, okay. He's, I just saw him for the first time in months, and, and it's just that he's, you know, he's just, he's always playing someplace, you know. That's good. That's on the road. A lot of people want that as, as a musician, they say. Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he's pretty accomplished, so he's, he's well known around the country, and so he's, not hurting for places to play. He actually, I have to tell you a story. In my early, early 30s, um, he worked at Guitar Workshop, I believe, or when mm-hmm. it was called Guitar Workshop, and he sold us all of our equipment for a band. And really? he basically pretty much closed the door and said, here, go ahead and shop. And we did. We bought mixing boards, speakers, amps, guitars. I mean, wow. we went crazy. So He's a good man. Yeah, and yeah. Honest. Yeah, it was great. Um, you keep saying Tucson is great for music and your Tucson family. Um, uh, where did you come before you came to Tucson? Well, I grew where up in you upstate at? New York. And really? when I met Victoria, she was living in Santa Fe and she wanted to move back there. And we did, but it was really hard to make a living in, in Santa Fe. And when our kids were of school age, we decided to go back to where I grew up because the schools were better and there was more work in a, in a shorter radius. In New York? In upstate New York, okay. yeah. And, but we got homesick for the Southwest and we didn't actually come to Tucson until we started to come back West. And, 
and um, as I said in Santa Fe, it w we couldn't make a living unless we were on the road all the time. And but we found when we'd come down to Tucson, we wouldn't have to travel so much. There was enough work to pretty much hold us here. Yet you know, we could take maybe two or three road trips a year, and and, uh, and enjoy it. Better you way know. to raise the kids. A much better way. Of yeah, to raise yeah. The good kids. thinking. We were talking. Um, I think it was. Um, I believe it was Greg um, Morton who was saying, if he could give one piece of advice to a musician, and I'll ask you that at the end of the show, what would it be? And he said, get a job. <laughs> you know, he's because it's so um, uh, difficult to try to maintain that if you don't have an established name. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I thought it was the, probably the best piece of advice I've heard from any interviewee at that point is, yeah, sometimes getting a part-time job is helpful. Sometimes you have to. You know, we tried, well, when the kids were growing up, I did. I had to. You know, it was just, it's, uh, I don't know how parents do it now. You know, things had gotten Barely. So, so expensive when my kids were young, and they're in their mid-40s now. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying barely. I mean, a lot of people barely make it. I, uh, I play in three bands and work full time, and there are days where I'm like, "Geez, you know." So, um, good, good, good. Hey, um, I'm gonna play a song so people can understand who we're listening to. Okay. What song would you like us to play first? Ah, uh, we could play um, "Break by the River," I guess. And um, Break by the River, I'm hearing this is something new coming out for you? This is a song that I actually found that Victoria started, and I found it on a little digital recorder. She never wrote down the words or anything. She wrote, I think, a verse and a chorus. And I, and I just happened to run across it one day, and I thought, wow, why didn't we know about this? Mm -hmm. you know? And so I put... Uh, put some banjo on it, put a banjo lick in there, and wrote a couple extra verses. I'm lucky enough to, this is from the new album uh, that I'm doing for the Ronstadt Record Company. Uh, it's gonna be called uh, Mother Don't Give Up On Me Now, and it's due out around Labor Day, I think. And uh, it has uh, Matt Rowland is playing uh, fiddle and mandolin, and Becca Rowland is singing with me. Okay, so, so we're playing which one? Break by the river. Okay, you're listening to KMKR 99.9 FM. Don Armstrong, Break by the River.
top one Ain't no push without some kind of pull Hard times come around, there are heroes underground But a hero will at times feel like a fool Gonna take, gonna take a little break Take a little break by the river Oh, you know, it won't do me any harm Just need a little time to recover Gonna take, gonna take a little break Take a little break by the river Oh, you know, it won't do me any harm Just need a little time So, Don, your wife wrote that, huh? She started it. I, awesome. I finished. We've done a few things together. What a way to pay honor to somebody who isn't here than to find some of their material and, and bring, by I think, by bringing life into the music, it almost brings um, memory back right. to life. Yeah. Well, it was a way to kind of sort of carry on our relationship. She had a stack of notebooks of... Uh, uh, songs and poems and little ideas that she and she was always writing them down and so it was kind of a way to sort of have an, an imaginary conversation I guess and there were a few songs there are going to be a few songs on the record that that uh, that she started just as little poems or something that I turned into a full-fledged song good for you I can tell you loved your wife dearly I did good good Okay, so we're talking Tucson and music, and one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I just think the Tucson music scene, for me, because I've lived here all my life, born and raised, and been in the music field since I was about 14 or 15. Sounds about right. So, yeah. <laughs> so I find that, to me, uh, I owe Tucson. Um, I never wanted rock star status. I just wanted to play my music and be yeah. heard. Um, that was never a desire of mine. And so um, I love this Tucson, I love the musicians, and I don't think there's ever enough we can do to keep them happy. Um, what's your opinion on the Tucson music scene? Hmm. Mm. Well, it took, a, it took a while to get into the music scene here, and I thought we would get into it much faster. Now I'm into it quite a bit. Um, and I, you know, I love it. It's, 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 it's so much fun to be a part of it. And it's so much fun to go out and be inspired by, by other musicians. And, you know, you get to a point when you get to be our age, I think, where you think, well, I've, I've seen it. You know, I've seen the great music. I grew up with the great music. When I was a couple weeks before my graduation, I got to go to a party uh, where Bob Dylan was. And wow. he had just recorded uh, Like a Rolling Stone, like that week. And so you look back and you say, I, you know, I've seen the best, but I also see the music that's coming up now and the young people that are, that are presenting the music, and I think we're, we're in really good hands. It's just such an honor to be a part of it. I, I do, and you know, earlier, and I, I guess I need to get a hold of them because, um, well, first of all, first things first is you said it was hard to break in at first. Um, and what I have to say t to that is I think a group of people came in and bought in the kind of music you did because we didn't do that kind of music here. You know, we were doing... Um, you know, typical rock and, and mm -hmm, 80s and mm -hmm. 90s. And all of a sudden, this banjo picking, bass playing, all this stuff comes in. And Tucson didn't have that. Really? So I'd like to think mm -hmm. that people like you and some of the bluegrass groups and the Ronstats really bought that into Tucson because it now is just, to me, I think it is, it is a staple in the Tucson music community. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, prior to that, it wasn't. So, um, if you wanted to hear good bluegrass, maybe there was one band. You wow. Know? Yeah. You know, so, there wasn't a lot, at least not that I knew of. And, I, yeah, I'm a rocker, but, you know, I also was always into the music scene as much as I could get in. So, 
good job on you for that. Well, yeah, you know, when I first met Greg Haver from Monterey Love Court, that man. he um, he grew up about thirty miles away from where I grew up in New York and upstate New York. Wow! And we used to go to the same coffee house where I, that's where I saw Bob Dylan and and so many great people who influenced me. And when he came out here, or when he opened Monterey Court, his dream was to have a music place like that one back back east. So I think that had a really strong impact. And he went through some hard times getting it going, but but he's brought some amazing entertainment to this. Uh, Susan Holden is another person with Rhythm and Roots. Yeah, I would say Greg is um, the epitome of what helped create the music scene in Tucson. He makes Monterey Court um, accessible to all kinds of musicians. It's true. He gives musicians a great break. He, he gets us in, gets us out. No BS. I mean, he's, he's all business, and he's got a very kind heart. Yeah, he's cranky in a very nice way. <laughs> I never heard it described that way, but yeah, yeah. He's all, yeah. Because there's times when I go home and I'm like, oh, do you think he's mad? And she goes, no, he's Greg. And yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, he's Greg. Well, the first time we took him a, a CD and, and said, you know, I think we'd do well here. And, and he said, thank you, and took it. And we stopped in a month later and asked him if he listened to it. He said, no, I, don't, I never listen to these CDs. <laughs> <laughs> so we were thinking, oh, okay. I, this isn't going anywhere, but it did. He heard us play at the songwriters circle. Yeah. And uh, and he actually called me like the next day and said, "I'd like you guys to play here." So. Yeah. That was now he can't keep up because everybody no. knows. And and I hear let's talk Monterey Court for a second. You're in charge of one of the. Uh, um, Monterey Court brunches. Sunday brunch. Fourth. Tell me about that. Well, it's a thrill. I mean, uh, Nancy Elliott and I became friends when she was when she was running the Sunday brunches, and I know that 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 had to be really hard for her to do to like do every one. every sing- and living in Casa Grande. Yes. And so I was thrilled when she offered me the fourth Sunday because it gave me an opportunity to say, well. Gee, who would I have, you know? And and so I've gotten in touch with some friends, uh, uh, like Lila Lopez is going to do one with me. Um, you just did one with Wally. We were trying to Wally. get there, and I'll do one with up. Sheriff Jim Wilson this in August. Oh, nice. Uh, Petey Ronstadt's going to do one with me. Uh, Lex Browning. Uh, that Michael Ronstadt, something else. I've been bumping into his music lately, and I was playing something on the radio the other day for KMKR and. I was like, oh, I really like this song, and I I should look before I go to play, obviously. But I was like, who is this again? It was like, that's Michael Ronstadt. Yeah. Well, I should have known. He's a playing. cello. Yeah. Um, incredible. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hold of him and tell him that I'm uh, fascinated with him right They're now. They're going to be here. Uh, Does he live in Tucson? No, he not? lives in Cincinnati. He and I are going to do a show together on the East Coast next year. Yeah. We've been talking about it for years. I've finally. got to get him because he is just He's going to be, I think they're going to be here over around Labor Day. They're going to have a, a, a CD release party for the Ronstadt Brothers. Well, I'm going to have to see if I can get him on the show. So, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome because they're incredible. And I think the Ronstadt, especially the men of the Ronstats, really help bring in this new genre of music into, you know, I call it like old Pueblo music. Um, Because there's no formal name for it, you know. Is it bluegrass? Is it new grass? Is it, you know, I play... He calls it postmodern southwestern music. Postmodern southwestern. I think that's what he calls it. I I call what we play um, anymore, I just call it, um, we're a junk band. You know, we Mm -hmm. just, we play a little this, a little this, a little this, and you add it together and it's all, you know, blah, blah. Well, he's, you know, he's Petey especially. Well, both of them, and and they got it from their dad, you know. uh, Michael did, uh, uh, he wrote so many songs about the Sonoran Desert. He did. And they were just so beautiful. We're going to have a birthday concert for uh, tribute to him at Monterey Court on Sunday, the August 25th. I should go there and try to cover little pieces of that, the music. 
Yeah. Yeah, that would be uh, very nice because, again, if it wasn't for people like you and people like the Ronstadts, mm -hmm. um, bluegrass and the O Pueblo style of music wouldn't be getting the recognition that it's really getting now, which is opening the doors for a lot of musicians. And speaking of opening the doors, let's hear another one of your songs. You want to take another one off your new CD? Yeah, we'll do Annabelle teaching her daddy to dance. This is about uh, Petey's daughter, Annabelle, when oh, she okay. was trying to Petey learn to Ronstadt? walk. Petey Ronstadt? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, now, are they related to Linda Ronstadt? Is that yeah, nephew. Michael, nephews. their dad was a younger brother oh okay the dad yeah, was the Michael. younger brother so okay yeah. so Ron Stats came from Tucson so we were in the studio all day and, and uh, Matt and Becca Rowland were playing over at Reed Park Zoo doing a concert so we decided we'd go over there and he went and got uh, his wife and, and Annabelle and wanting to she was really wanting to to walk but didn't have the muscular coordination or the strength yet so uh, but she led him like around the perimeter of that oh, how fun. for the entire night. He was exhausted. I told him the next day, I said, we should write a song about that. He said, well, I'll leave it to you. So that's, that's it. Okay, so this is Don Armstrong performing Annabelle teaching her daddy to dance. True story. that chasing the sun down? Who's that bringing the moon around? Who's got you thinking for crying out loud? Why well, it's Annabelle teaching her daddy to dance. Who's that tossing back Cheerios? Who's that up on her tippy toe? Who's that strut? Steady as she goes It's Annabelle teaching her daddy to dance Life is strange, life is sweet Life is full of surprises That's how we grow But to know how to dance Is surely something every mommy and daddy should know Who's that making my heart sing? It's Annabelle teaching her daddy to dance. Life is young, life is old, life is full of surprises. That's how we grow, but to know how to dance is surely something every mommy and daddy should know. Chasing the sun down Who's that bringing the moon around Who's got you thinking For crying out loud Why it's Annabelle Teaching her daddy to dance Ooh. Ooh. Annabelle Teaching her daddy to dance Ooh. Ooh. Annabelle teaching her daddy to dance. Okay, so we know, Dawn, that um, you're inspired to write sometimes because this was a story of a little yeah. child, which shows. Um, um, what's some of your inspirations as a songwriter? Well... 
it's funny how it changes as you get older. No kidding. And is that what's happening? <laughs> I've wrote two songs in the, in the last couple months about uh, seeing uh, the moon in the daytime. Oh. Which I love to do. It always. And there was one I wrote about uh, walking outside my door and seeing this wisp of a cloud that looked just like a ballerina doing an arabesque. In the sky. In the sky. And it just, and she just kind of like held her form, didn't like dissipate or anything. And I'm there, you know, things start running around in your head. And I think, oh, she's dancing for me. And then I saw that she was kind of dancing her way actually towards a full afternoon moon. Ooh. So I thought, oh, okay, this is getting, turning out to be a Leonard Cohen song, I think, or something. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, and that's something I attribute to Victoria. I mean, she taught me, me to be observant, you know, to be in the moment and, and to... Uh, and to recognize and observe what's going on around me, so. Uh, so your inspiration can be anything from a wispy cloud to a child dancing. A lot of a lot of my songs come from dreams. I've always written my dreams down. My dreams were always very important. Mm -hmm. uh, my dreams often told me things that were going to happen, uh, and so a, a lot of. And a lot of songs just kind of like, as a friend of mine said, they just kind of fall onto my head. Yeah, that, that's kind of sometimes how I feel. I'll just be walking, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, and I have no idea what it's about, why I wrote it. It's almost like channeling, like it yeah. came from a different universe, and I have no clue what it's about, but it's about something. It is about something. And the thing is, you discover yourself as you write it, because yeah. after you're done, sometimes years later you'll see what it was about but you didn't you exactly didn't know it then hindsight hindsight and sometimes it's just a word you hear or sometimes it's an image you see but you or you a feeling. know I, or I've a feeling. noticed yeah. for me sometimes if my feelings are hurt mm -hmm. if I'm feeling happy or blessed um, oh I love songs about gratitude and blessings um, and I'm a therapist and so someone says, you write songs like a therapist. And it's like, because I'm always <laughs> trying to find answers and solutions. So, But, you know, it's good to know where our songs come from. I have a question for you, Don. Sure. Um, because you're an aging musician, as am I. Um, and I've noticed so many of us. The people I grew up with were all getting gray hair and, and whatnot, and we're aging. And, so, and I'm grateful that I came into music that, when I did because technology has changed music a great, great deal. And so one thing I ask every person in here is, how has technology affected you? Wow. I know, right? Well, you know, I mean, I remember going through the 80s where everything was synthesizer mm -hmm. and, and uh, Techno pop and stuff like that, and, and I hated the '80s. By the I, way, oh, I actually we grew quite a bit because Victoria was a keyboardist, and well, so that's true. we sort of incorporated it and played around with it, and and it was probably kind of silly sometimes, you know, but it uh, it uh, broadened it broadened our horizon so much. But the thing is, we always went back to our roots, which was pretty much folk music, mm -hmm. um, just very simple. Uh, uh, guitar, banjo, and piano. Uh, Mandolin occasionally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, it's still there, you know. It's, and so in my band, yeah, we have an accordion. and uh, That's a Ronstadt. It used to be. Bobby, Bobby was so busy, so now I have Gary Mackinder of the uh, Carnivaleros. Oh, are place. they? Yeah, I, I've played some of their music. Yeah, they seem great. like a very good band. They are. They're really great, and Gary's a, Gary's a really talented artist in many different ways. Uh, very one of the most creative people I've ever met, and so we get Nick Coventry. Um, I wrote a couple songs about my daughter taking me to Paris a couple years ago, which was talk about. I had a dream about living in Paris. Uh, back when my son was a baby, almost 50 years ago, that, that I was living in Paris in the 1700s. And hmm. that I was a very well-to-do well person, writing with a quill, writing a letter to somebody. And I mean, if that was true, 
then I probably was guillotined, I would think. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'd always wanted to go, and she had gotten a big, big uh, 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 raise at work. She'd gotten a big uh, promotion. And she said, I'm taking you to Paris. And so I wrote a couple songs, and I just heard kind of a gypsy jazz violin in there, sort of a Stefan Grappelli, and that's Nick, Nick Coventry. Nick is the best. And so I wrote it for him to play, and accordion, and French accordion, and Mikey Ronstadt playing the cello. And it just came together so beautifully. And so that's another thing about Tucson is that we have such a diverse uh, range of talent here. Oh, we do. I don't know if you saw any of my list that I put up, but... Um, <laughs> I, 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 I probably know about a third of the people that are on that list. Yeah, well, there's over 300 bands mm -hmm. and over 150 solo artists. And you add the solo artists with the bands, and I'm sure I only got probably 75%, so there's still another. But already that's just so much music in Tucson. But you avoided my question. Oh. Technology. Oh, technology. Okay. <laughs> well, it's just that now, you know, now making a record, and now they're back to making records again, except it's much that. more expensive no, to make it. Um, and having having Petey produced this album, I mean, it's his it's his company, and it was his dad's company, but um, I just kind of left it up to him, and very happy to have young ears, because I don't know what's out there now. You know, people sell people get songs around much differently than, than they did 45, 50 years ago. Yeah, thank. Uh, and, and, <laughs> uh, Put it this way, in the early 80s, I earned my degree in recording engineering. Okay. Analog, you know. Wow, uh, okay. <laughs> That's right. It that was... serves no purpose to me now. Now, I'm in here on a digital recorder, and I, I do do a lot of recording and whatnot, but... I love technology. I think it really has aided the music scene personally. Um, and I think it also takes a little away. Uh, well, you know, you know, well, it does. Like, you where's know that album and where's that cover? And I can't wait for the release date. When I hear uh, a record that I had when I was a kid that I would play over and over again, and I hear now the digitized version of it, you don't hear the noise yeah. in there. It's different. But a lot of people, though, a lot of artists now are going back to analog. To the noise. They, they prefer that, mm -hmm. you know. Um. But I want the more natural sound. The disadvantage of it was I recorded a CD earlier this year, and I had a great producer and a great studio. And when it came time to mixing, I said, I, I get to be part of the mixing period. And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, definitely. And so we're in there, and we had a choir in with one of my songs. And there were some off voices. And he goes, I go, oh, well, okay, I'll get a hold of the choir. He goes, no need. You know, we'll just highlight this, and we'll auto-pitch it, and it'll go right into tune. And I was shocked. I sat there with my mouth oh, open, yes. like, you mean we don't have to do a retake? No, we can just auto-tune it. And I said, I don't know if I like that. And he goes, well, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> you know, because we don't have time to call and bring everybody in and do a retake. But it is amazing that... I've done my share of that. What's amazing about this record th that I'm doing now is Petey wanted to do everything live, as live as possible. Yeah, see, that's and what I like. And we did, and there, there might have been one punch-in on the accordion or one on the violin. There were no vocal punch-ins, no... Uh, evening out the pitch or anything mm -hmm. like that. I'm just uh, I'm just amazed. And there were a few little things that are just a little bit off. But PD says that's where the that's where the heart of it is. I think you know? so. And and I agree with him. Now in, in our band, with, uh, we say celebrate your mistakes because they teach us something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, I won't do that again. Or I hope I don't do that. Maybe <laughs> that's a different way to play that song. Well, you know, cause we've yeah. done that before too. Like. Ooh, we should add that boo boo. So there, there have been some really great accidents that have occurred in some recordings I I've love done, musical and I don't even know if I can do it again. You know, I know it's a, that's it's, it's like, like a timing might be a little bit off or something yeah. like that, but 
it's like cooking, you know, someone, I'll make a soup or something and someone goes, oh, that's incredible, give me the recipe. And I'm like, I can, I didn't use a recipe and I'll probably never reproduce it again. And so enjoy what you tasted. Yeah. And I think it's the same with music. I, I tend to record all of our shows and I've recorded all of my shows since I was 12 and I have all the tape still and I'm wow. slowly starting to put them on mp3s um, to preserve everything but it's like I listen and I rarely do I ever hear me doing the song the exact same way and, and I love that it just it just adds to that that's good yeah it annoys people who I play with, like. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just because normally I do what's called tinka tinka on a little mandolin, and mm -hmm. so I tinka, and it's always a little different because I don't memorize anything. It's like, oh, this sounds really good, and yeah. so it's it's kind of fun. But um, Dawn, I'm going to ask you what I ask everybody else, and that is, if you had one piece of advice to give to some of the new mm. musicians out there, what would you give? Wow, I know it's a it's an interesting. It's an interesting question, and especially coming from seasoned musicians. Well, I just, I always just went with it. You know, my mom took me to a Kingston Trio concert when I was 12. Ooh, nice. And that was, my parents knew they'd lost me after that. And that was all I wanted to do, you know, and, and, and I followed it. And the thing is, I've been lucky enough to learn so much from watching people and listening to people and uh, being up close to people and to learn technique, to learn that songwriting is a means of communication, but it's also a way to learn how to tell a good story mm -hmm. or to tell a good joke or something like that. It's, it's how to convey something that makes somebody want to hear the rest of it after they've heard the, the first line. And, and you do that from listening. Mm -hmm. Listening is, is an important, as an important part of, as, as singing is. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just observe, just be there. So observe and listen. Yeah. And oh, that's really, really good advice. What's next for you? Next, um, I, I have a short tour of New England coming up in nice. September. Hopefully the record will be out by then. We're not sure. It's going to be pretty tight, pretty close. But uh, uh, and who knows? I'm hoping that this record will open up some things. Like I can't tour like I used to tour. Why? <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> but but I'd like to I'd I'd like to broaden the horizons somewhat, yeah. you know and. Uh, and there's so much great stuff happening out there that I want. I'd love to play some festivals. And that's one thing I was going to mention about the Tucson music scene is the Tucson Folk Festival yeah. and the TKMA. I mean, you talk about people that need to be thanked greatly, and that's that's them. And that's I think especially now since they have people like Petey Ronstadt and Matt Rowland working on the board, they got these really young professional people that. They're not into it to make a name for themselves. They're into it to bring out the art and the, and the beauty of, of what's now, there. Now, is Petey here in Tucson? Yes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, that makes oh, sense. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, I mean, the folk festival is Tucson, basically. No. And this year, it was, this year, there was a vibrancy to it that I haven't seen. But there was an excitement that, I mean, people have been excited about it before. But I think it's because of the new location with the, uh, in the library, uh, plaza there uh, and it was so beautiful and plus you didn't have the windstorm that would come up every year about a half an hour before I well, would because they the changed the date too yeah that helped that helped a lot um, and I think it was windy in other parts of the festival but not like it was when it used to be over over in the park there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and Everybody was happy. Everybody was excited. Everybody was anxious to hear everybody else, and and uh, that's that's a good musical family, right and there. And that that's Tucson. I mean, and 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 that's Tucson. Don, I can't thank you enough for being well, on the show. I can't thank you enough for asking me. This and is when your CD comes out, 
bring it our way. I will. I tend to take people's CDs, I, I rip them onto a separate drive, and then I donate them to the radio station so everybody can play them and everybody oh, cool, gets a chance cool. to be heard. Nice. Um, like I said, this is about being heard. So um, we'll look forward to seeing you at a... Uh, oh, that's it. If somebody wanted to know where you're playing, what's going on with you, how would they get a hold of you? I have a website Tell me about called that. Night People Dance. Night People Dance? That's the name of a song that uh, I wrote a long, long time ago um, about moving to New Mexico and uh, where people would sleep on top of their adobe houses because oh, they're, they're flat in the summertime because it was cooler yeah yeah and i read a book by frank waters called the man who killed the deer which was mostly about the indian tribes of northern new mexico and the kids would climb up there in the pueblos and that was their summer bedroom and they'd climb up the ladders with their blankets and they'd go to sleep watch the night people dance the stars so your web page is nightpeopledance.com? Yes. yes. And people can get your schedule and yes. uh, your CDs. And yes. Awesome. So I hope you all listen to that. Nightpeopledance.com is how to get a hold of Don Armstrong. Don, thank you again. Thank you, Tyler. This is Tyler Woods, and you're listening to KMKRLP. And we're going to leave them with one last song. What is it we're leaving them with, by this the way? This is a song called Nagizi. This is a song that Victoria wrote. And Nagizi is a little Navajo village in northwestern New Mexico. And uh, Nagizi is a Navajo word that means where the squash grows. Okay. And it's a lovely song. Don Armstrong, Nagizi. And we'll be right back. We were riding real hard, riding real hard, riding real hard. Out near Nagisi, we were riding real hard for no other reason than the pure, pure joy. We rode laughing, singing, embracing the wind for no other reason than the pure, pure joy. Out near Nagisi, we were loving the day, loving the day, loving the day. Out near Nagisi, we were loving the day for no other reason than the pure, pure joy. We rode grateful, powerful, breathing in the sun. Reason than the pure.